Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome back once again. We're going to take a look at a brand new design by Jerry Moen of Moen Works. We're going to take a look at his custom mongoose and then we're going to take a look at the Riot production prototype that was just sent to him to kind of give you guys a little heads up of something new that's coming, something very cool, very affordable as an option to getting one of Jerry's handmade customs. So we're going to start off with the packaging. Very simple zippered case as we're all accustomed to with many custom knives. But it's what's inside that's so special. This little guy, 8 inches overall with about a 3.5 inch blade, is the new Mongoose. Now this particular variation is being done in Dama Steel and the uh, titanium frame is actually a really light golden anodization with blue accents throughout. Now what makes this knife so different from everything else that Jerry does, it's very slim, it's very sleek, and it feels, I don't want to say that it feels uh, delicate, because it's not. It's obviously a very strongly built knife. You can see that lock in there, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. It just, it doesn't feel like one of these crazy overbuilt folders that are uh, once again becoming in vogue. It's solidly built and it feels like it could do anything, but there's something about the slim size of it that makes it feel more like a gentleman's folder than anything else. Yes, it's too big to be called a proper gentleman's folder. It has a pocket clip, so it can't be called a gentleman's folder, but it really has that feel of a gentleman's folder. Let me give you a little comparison to uh, what has always been my favorite Moen Custom, and that's the Panther. Uh, this was the uh, basically the offshoot from the Blue Max being done in titanium with inlays and whatnot. And you'll see that it is a little bit larger, much more slender, much more sleek. And as much as I love my Panther, and I've had this for a few years now, I think about three or four years, um, it's a great little lightweight knife to carry. This is even lighter because, as you can tell, there's a lot less material going into it. One of the things that I love is the way that the blade just gently disappears into the frame. Beautifully done. Give you some nice uh, tight shots of that honeycomb pattern. Really, really nicely carved into the titanium. It's got the jipping on the back side of the titanium. You have a <clears throat> slightly raised and jimped backspacer. Really, really love the pocket clip. I love the shape of it. I love the fact that it's skeletonized. I love the, uh, the Todd bag ball bearing that's uh, in there, which Jerry and Todd being such good friends, Todd obviously gave him permission to use his idea. We've seen a lot of makers do that and uh, not get permission to do it. And it's also blind screwed, so the uh, the clip is attached from the underside, so there's no exposed hardware for that. I love that it cleans up the look quite a lot. The action is just fantastic. Now, it's a lightweight blade, so it doesn't want to just fall under its own weight, so you do have to, you know, you are going to close it like a normal knife. But the action is smooth, the detent is absolutely perfect, as well as the polish and the etch on that damn steel blade. Nice clean grinds. Love that top swedge going all the way to the tip. Plenty of room to rest your thumb before you get to that little mini harpoon there. And it's easy to carry. One of the nicest things about this knife that will make it a good choice for EDC is the fact that it is slim in this direction. It is fairly slim in this direction. And no matter how long it is, and, and it is a very elegantly long design, it doesn't take up a lot of room in the pocket. The pocket clip is very secure. Once it makes its way past the lip of your pocket, it stays in very, very well. But you're not fighting to get it in or out. It's just an overall really elegant, beautiful design. Now, there are two different blade shapes. He does a traditional Warncliffe, and then he does this one here. I love this recurve. The recurve is my favorite of the uh, the different blade styles that are available. 
a custom like this in damascus steel with the anodizing uh, and all the work that's being done to it uh, you're looking at right around twelve hundred dollars for one like this now this one is already sold uh, Jerry did let me borrow it his customer let him let me borrow it in order to show you the comparisons to the Riot prototype now please do keep in mind this is a prototype there's one thing that I know of that may possibly be changed and that's just going to be a slight variance in the finish that's all but all the major stuff is here it's going to be an M390 blade titanium slabs front and back uh, titanium everything screws everything um, but it is a dead-on one-to-one duplication of the original custom mongoose now you saw that in my photography I did my best to put uh, components close to one another so you could really draw that comparison and see that there is almost no difference between this production prototype and the custom now here's the great thing this is twelve hundred dollars let's say it wasn't damn steel it had a little bit less uh, you know anodizing and, and, and fancy stuff done to it you're still looking at around eight hundred bucks for a knife like this this is gonna be three hundred dollars now that may change by 20 bucks or so I don't know again this is just the prototype stage it is not ready for release it'll be ready by or before the Christmas holiday season but as of right now they are shooting for 299 which I think is the perfect price point as with every Riot knife they have just nailed that action it feels fantastic it is scary sharp just like the custom and they did a great job of replicating everything now here we have a much simpler finish in that bead blasted finish it doesn't have that that cracked ice finish that we see on the custom they did a really great job of replicating everything the backspacer looks and feels the same the jimping on the back side of the frame feels the same and they did the insert lock or tab lock whatever you want to call it uh, in the exact same way that Jerry has and if I'm not mistaken and I might be if I'm not mistaken this might be the first tab lock folder that Riot has done so it probably took them a little bit of time to uh, get that tuned because it's a tricky it's a tricky little son of a bitch I tell you right now I've watched Jerry tune his over the years and it's super easy to make a mistake and have too much pressure on that lock providing too much tension on the detent and you'll you can feel friction as you open and close it it takes uh, quite a bit of work to get it tuned just perfectly it's not the same as cutting out your frame lock and then relieving the tension back here and then finding that sweet spot and then just replicating that over and over and over and over again what you're doing with every single knife is you're setting that lock into a frame every single time and every single one can have a little variance here and there be a little bit different and provide probably a little bit more of a pain in the ass but I gotta tell you it works really really well whether it's on the custom or it's on the production you'll notice it's a very thick lock makes a very solid engagement up to that blade but it's very easy to disengage and also you'll notice here because it's blue it makes it easier to see that uh, it does protrude from the frame so you don't need to do extra relief on the presentation side of the frame you don't have to jam your thumb in there you just glide it right across and it's super easy to access that lock and by the way both versions the custom and the production are nicely jimped on the flipper tab let's get that knife out of there so even though it's a fairly small flipper tab you don't feel like your finger is ever gonna fall or slide I should say slide off of it I think this is gonna be a huge hit for Jerry every time I've picked up one of these mongooses uh, whenever I stop by a shop hang out in his office for a while play with the various knives that he has uh, in, in various degrees of construction I've always been enamored by this model again that doesn't take away my love for the Panther and the Blue Max 
but there's something about this knife that really is wildly different for Jerry. You gotta realize, Jerry is a big old Texan. He likes you know, big old Texan things. He drives a big old Texan truck, and he likes his frames and his handles to be, uh, even though they're ergonomic, there's still a bit of chubbiness to them. There's still a lot of meat to hold on to, even in such a tiny package such as this. But with the mongoose, again, the only word I can really use is elegant. It has this long, sleek elegance to it, and it makes it really easy to hold on to in pretty much any grip that you can come up with. And again, that, that jimping on the backspacer there is really good for a reverse grip. Even if you're, you're just doing a little slicing and you're just kind of uh, pinch holding it like you would a chef's knife, this frame feels so ergonomic it feels so wonderful in the hand there's no hot spots I mean you will feel the clip because it does protrude quite a bit um, you do feel it but it, it doesn't really provide a hot spot I don't feel it being uncomfortable in any way the jimping is nice without being too sharp and that goes for all the jimping it's more aggressive on the lock so that you've got a really sure grip on that lock but the back spacer, you definitely feel it, but it's not sharp. It doesn't feel like it's tearing up your skin. And same thing for the back of the, uh, of the frame. As a matter of fact, you can glide your finger across it fairly easily. It's when you apply pressure that it just locks your thumb right in. It just grabs your skin and locks it in. Overall, really, really well done. It's a compact, slim, sleek package. I do not know yet what different variations are going to be offered in the production version. I know when you order a custom, there are, you know, it's, it's almost sky's the limit. My favorite version, Jerry makes one that everything is done in black DLC. And I mean true DLC, not the crap that like production knife companies call DLC. Um, the, I mean real true DLC that reflects the finish of the material underneath. So. You know, if it's satin finish, you'll see a satin finish coming through the DLC. If it's a mirror polish like this Dana Steel, it'll be a mirrored DLC. It is a true DLC. He does the frame, he does the blade, does the hardware. And holy shit, does it look really, really, really good. Kind of sinister. So I'm hoping we're going to see an all-black version uh, of this production model as well. But I can't promise that because I just don't know. I did make one suggestion to Jerry. There is literally nothing about this knife to change. It is perfect in its design and its execution. But I said, hey, you know what? Maybe talk with Riot and see if they can do a nice hand rub satin on there. Uh, their belt satins are among the cleanest you're going to find in the production knife industry. However, they have perfected the art of a true hand rub satin and they've done that on a few different makers knives now I don't know if that raises the cost so high that they can't do the three hundred dollar retail but if they're able to squeeze it in if Jerry's able to make that happen that could be the one possible change between this version and what you're going to see out at retail when they release but if not if it just can't be done because Jerry's not the kind that wants to go out there and you know and charge a million dollars for every knife he really wants to present a great value and make sure more people have access to his knives that's why he's doing a production knife to begin with so if the price is going to get so crazy that he feels it's just not worth it he'll stick with the belt satin which again take a good look at that very clean very very nicely done love that prominent swedge They did a nice hand rub satin on the flats. So keep your eyes out for this. I'm fairly certain you're going to see a lot of different retailers carrying these. Jerry himself will be offering these. So do follow him on Instagram. Do follow him on Facebook for the updates, for the release dates, and the final pricing. Again, last I heard, they were aiming for $299 in M390. If that changes, I wouldn't expect it to change by more than maybe 20, 25 bucks at worst. So I think everybody's going to be very, very happy with that. Everybody knows the legendary quality of Riat. Um, it's, it's impossible to get a bad knife from Riat. They nail everything. Their fit and finish is amazing. 
the materials they're using are fantastic and their actions just continue to amaze everybody so congratulations to Jerry and for uh, David Dang at React for coming together and uh, doing this little project I'm so incredibly happy for both of them and I'm happy for everybody that gets their their chance to get one of these maybe you've never owned a Moa knife maybe you haven't had a chance to see his knives in person because he doesn't make a lot you know everything he does is in very short runs everything's very very exclusive now is going to be your chance to see why so many of us love Jerry, love his designs, love his knives. I've been carrying his knives for five years now, ever since the day he and I met. And I've been nothing but impressed with his work ethic, with the quality of, of knives that he has put out. And uh, got to tell you, man, if you can't afford to get the custom or you can't wait for the custom to get done, this is going to be an amazing damn near custom knife out of the box for $2.99. That's what's so exciting. All right, guys, I'm going to cut it off here. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them down below, and I'll see you on the next video.